My name is Jared O'Brien. I used to go by Captain Cool or Captain Cool 2 or Cool on YouTube. I now go by Centarium or Centaur 1M if you want to be a smartass. And I am the creator of Freeman's Ish Mind 2. My first interaction with Ross happened about seven months prior to meeting uh, Ian and Robin and Sarah and Curtis and Simon and was probably a lot less impactful than it should have been. But I, uh, I first reached out to, to Ross in February of 2010 because him and I had a similar issue with demo recording. And I figured, oh, I'll just email Ross. You know, He works on machinimas, which are videos in the source engine for his particular case. And I work on speedruns within the source engine, which you know, is also a video. So I reached out to him and said, hey, we're having this problem with demo recording. Every time we try playing a demo back, it just crashes. And from there, uh, him and I just started dissecting this and you know, just talking as if we were actually working on this project together. And to this day, he still comes to me you know, asking for help. Uh, a few months ago, he emailed me saying, hey, I'm looking for someone who can modify some maps for Half-Life 2. Uh, do you know anyone? Unfortunately, I, I didn't. My connections in the modding community for Half-Life 2 are pretty thin these days. But the, the fact that he's kept me in the loop for over nine years is fucking incredible. I mean, I don't see him as Ross Scott, you know, the, uh, the superstar machinima maker. I see him as, you know, Ross Scott, the person I've helped out on numerous occasions and just generally a great person. However, it didn't mean as much, even when I talked to him for the first time over Skype, it didn't mean as much as the recognition I got from the masterminds. So, I first uploaded uh, Freeman's Ish Mind 2 on September 4th, 2010, a date that I'll remember forever because September 4th, 2009 is when I created Source Runs, my current project, which we're about to hit the 10 year anniversary on, which I'm excited for. But I created that video. 14 days later, I put up my next video. But on September 15th, Curtis was the first mastermind to post on the video. And I remember just seeing his comment on the video after days and days of frantically checking my, uh, my email. And then there it is. Corky064 has commented on Freeman Such Mind episode 1, and I was fucking petrified. <laughs> I opened that email... And I saw nothing but praise coming from him. And at that moment, it's like my entire world just flipped. I mean, I was <laughs> static. I was like, if I can impress Curtis, of all people, uh, the person I thought would, would give me the greatest pushback based on what he said in Meeting of the Minds, the, the first one, where he said, don't be a Freeman's mind ripoff. I, I thought he'd be the harshest against it, but he was the one who praised it the most. And then I, a couple days later, four, three or four days later, I put out episode two. And then that Sunday morning, September 19th, 2010, a, a day I will remember for the rest of my life, Curtis posts his blog spot uh, post praising Freeman Such Mind 2. And then next thing I know, Ian's commenting on it, Sarah's commenting on it, all three of them have already subscribed, uh, Simon's commenting on it, and I'm just fucking... I remember um, being at my mom's house and just being so excited when I saw a uh, comment, someone saying, does this mean that Captain Cool 2 will be in the Masterminds? And Ian saying, I'd say so. He has the stuff or something like that. And th those comments are gone forever, unfortunately. But I was jump, literally jumping up and down frantically in excitement because it felt like I, I had achieved the goal I've sought out for so long to to uh, achieve. It, it was such a surreal moment. It was unbelievably exciting. And then about, I want to say, 10 days or so later, I think it was the 28th of September of 2010, um, I, I finally got to speak with them over Skype. And I was my typical obnoxious self. You know, I fucking cringe really hard at my first conversation with them, which is immortalized in Mind the Gap episode two. But I guess to summarize all this, my thoughts and feelings when I interacted with Ross, casual. When I interacted with the masterminds, incredible. 
I started my series in 2010, and around that time I just had a really crappy pre-built computer and had a lot of trouble actually recording the footage. Add on top of that, the, the way that I, I created the episodes in the first place was so just uh, stupid. So uh, the first thing I would do is I would write a script, and then I would record that script, and then I would record a demo of the footage trying to line up with what I wrote on the script. Very. I, to this day, I still don't know how the hell I did it. Uh, eventually, I learned and realized, oh, that's not how you do it. You record the footage first, and then you record your lines. No, I, you know, too late. Um, so what I would do, since I didn't have a good computer, is I would record the demo. I'd drive over to my father's house, and I would record the demo in fraps with you know some tweaked console commands. And bring that back home and just stitch it all together. And for the first three episodes, it was really fun. Um, where it started to kind of not become fun was probably around my fourth episode when I had to take my laptop and my microphone, uh, get in my car and drive out to some remote place and just start recording lines to the footage. And I think that's probably what killed it for me. I, I really enjoyed writing the lines first and then recording it, then putting it on. As, as big of a clusterfuck as it was, it was more enjoyable that way because you weren't constantly trying to think of new lines you know on the spot and maybe it was the pressure of sitting out my car and it just getting too hot to sit in there for too long um another fundamental problem with the mind series genre is that it's just you there's no one there to bounce ideas off of there's no one there to tell you hey this sucks why don't you try it again and you're it's a solo project more importantly in the in the machinima itself, it's just you. You know, there's no chance by design. Mind series are a are a monologue. There's no room for for other characters to be introduced, no matter how you want to implement it. And if you do, it's just gonna be corny and cheesy and lame. I mean, uh, you could pull it off if you did it right, but you'd basically just be <laughs> creating a schizophrenic. And the second biggest problem is uh, character development. Unfortunately, there's not really a whole lot of room for character development. I'm, I'm not going to say that's impossible. It's just, it's really difficult. Because in these series themselves, you have maybe four or five hours of nonstop uh, commentary. And no one's going to just change, like, in, in a couple hours. Unless you're, like, under some psychedelic effect and your mind's being altered then you're not going to go through some epiphany within four or five hours, and you're definitely not going to really learn anything about yourself in that time period. The thing that made me want to create my mind series the most was not so much, you know, Barney's mind or Shepard's mind or Shell's mind or any of the minds. It was the interaction that I saw between the group of five, just a, a bunch of people who just came together from obscurity, who created similar content on the internet, all competing for... You know, uh, the attention on YouTube, which I later found out not a single one of them gave a shit about the popularity. I take that back. Curtis was the only one who cared. Um, seeing the interaction between all of them and the collaboration was the coolest thing to me. And I, I took that as pure inspiration when I was creating my own uh, my own machinima because I wanted to, to have that same level of, of collaboration in my own. So I, I, I think... Not so much watching one person series was the uh, the trigger for me. I think if I had to pin it to one thing, it'd probably be the uh, last episode of Barney's Mind, where he, he was able to implement all these, you know, crazy, <laughs> crazy ideas like uh, escaping with Flight Simulator and having Curtis and I think Simon in it. Was Simon in it? I don't know. It's been so long. Uh, unfortunately, due to how long ago um, I found Freeman's Mind, I... I really don't remember what my initial reaction was uh, when I first found it. Uh, all I know is that um, I was re-watching like, the, the first seven episodes over and over and over and constantly checking his blogspot page, just, just waiting for the next episode to be released. And those first few episodes, like as you were following it, as you were seeing the, the episodes come out, was an incredible experience. I mean, it could just be nostalgia, but I mean, I just... <laughs> extremely excited when a new Freeman's Mind episode came out because the level of quality for that day and age on YouTube was not found anywhere else on the on the platform. So 
I'm going to guess that my initial reaction was just <laughs> giddy because it was so engrossing and it was the only reason I subscribed to Machinima on YouTube. As far as seeing Ross continuing the series in 2017, I mean, it, it kind of made sense. You know, it's his most popular video series. It's, you know, it's what put him on the map and, you know, it's how he makes a living. I mean, un unlike the rest of uh, the masterminds, you know, we didn't make a fucking dime off of our series. He makes an income off of this. Um, however, I don't remember my reaction to <laughs> well, when I first heard that Ross was continuing the series due to two reasons. First, a mutual friend of Ross and I's uh, spilling the beans a little bit too early, telling me that Freeman's Mind 2 was going to happen, just that he didn't know when it was going to happen. And um, um, an, an email I got from Ross a few months before he released Freeman's Mind 2 Episode 1, um, asking me, hey, what, what version of Half-Life 2 is the most stable, uh, yada, 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 and we sent him one of our builds we used to speedrun with. Um, oh shit, how do I end this? Fuck to the no, like a big fuck to the no. No, these things were time consuming, they were grueling, it was a nightmare in most situations. J just to kind of ease the pain of, of making these episodes, I would just not get, I wouldn't get shit faced drunk, but I would get buzzed enough to the point where it, it, it didn't occur to me just how fucking painstaking these episodes were to make. It wasn't until I started recording the video first and then recording the audio that it became so painstaking because you're sitting there staring at Sony Vegas's timeline, just thinking, well, got another six minutes to fill. What the fuck am I going to say? So, no. No, it was not easy to make these episodes. Well, it being the source engine, obviously we had issues with demo recording and the fucking interpolation view. I swear to God, I have never seen a poorer implemented demo recording system than I have in source. I mean, what a broken pile of crap. And Ross had the same exact issue too. Him and I worked on this for a very, very long time trying to figure out what the hell is going on with the interpolation. Like, one of two things happen. Either your NPCs are glitched to hell and just shake and act all weird when you're trying to render out a, a demo, or your screen shakes every time you jump in the air. It's a freaking nightmare. We, we had to go to Valve to get a fix for this, and it still didn't work. And it wasn't until a couple years after I quit my series that, oh, there's a command to fix it, and it's demo rollback legacy, whatever the fuck. So, yeah. And that was just kind of the tip of the iceberg. I mean, there's always struggles with making the series at all. I mean, you know, you're trying to write lines, you're trying to keep it fresh, yada, yada, yada. But it doesn't help that the source engine was such a pile of garbage with demo recording. I mean, fuck! Well, when I began my series, I went to Best Buy and bought one of these Razer headsets with a, one of those extendable mics that came out. Which I thought would be excellent quality, and then I learned that, oh no, you want a condenser mic. Um, which one of my friends blended me his blue snowball. I should have returned that like eight years ago, but it's broken now. So, you know, if he wants it, it's broken. You can have the broken piece of shit. Um, then around 2012-ish, which I think is a little bit after I quit my series, I got the mic you hear now. A blue snowball. Wait, a blue Yeti. Right? Yeah. Which, unfortunately, I never really got to use for Freeman Sish Mine, but it's aided me in pretty much everything else. But the snowball is pretty much what I made the bulk of my episodes with, at least the ones with decent audio quality. Other than that, it was just, you know, my computer, my laptop to render things out uh, until it broke, and I replaced it with another laptop, which also broke. I've also been through 11 phone screens, and I'm not even joking about that. And that's just for the iPhone 6 I have now. I don't know how many phone screens I've replaced. Oh, God. I, I really don't think a lot of people liked my series, and, and for good reason. I mean, there was a myriad of things that uh, I, I, I can't go back and watch it, because, I mean, I, I had... Even back then, I couldn't really go back and watch it, because I was watching myself making a fool of myself in real time, and I, I, I couldn't really fucking calm myself down enough to realize, hey, you're being fucking obnoxious. Also, stop interrupting people and mind the gap. I mean, fuck. I I, I think people, uh, it wasn't so much the series they didn't like, but just kind of uh, me that they didn't like. 
And I'm not trying to make this a woe is me thing. I'm just, uh, I mean, looking back, you know, in perspective, it's understandable if people didn't like it. And the people who did like it, uh, <laughs> why? <laughs> it wasn't good. I don't even know how the fuck I was ever initiated into the masterminds. I'm not really sure why I stopped making my series. I think I was just disappointed in the results that I had produced. I didn't really enjoy making the series anymore, and I just I just wanted to quit, really. You know, I mean, it's like a marriage that's starting to fail. Do you really want to keep putting in that effort when you can just ditch someone, go with someone more suitable for you? That was a really shitty analogy. Uh, it just It just wasn't working out, you know. It's it's not it's not you it's it's me I'm just I just don't want to do it anymore. Um, <laughs> dumb fucking jokes aside, uh, it, it was it was just too much of a solo project to want to continue. It, it it's kind of the equivalent of, you know, cooking like a, a a twelve course meal, just so you can sit there and look at it. That's another shitty analogy. I don't know why I quit my series. I just didn't want to do it anymore. The memories of recording the final episode for Freeman's Such Mind were... It, it, it's weird because that was the episode I was most looking forward to making, but that was the one that never came out. And, like, I really wasted Ian and Robin's time having them record all those lines for Sheckley and the other one, whose name I forget. And it sucks because those were really, really good lines. Like, Ian and Robin did a great fucking job making those lines like robin had a bunch of little witty remarks here and there and he ian's just, just really good at being ian uh fuck I, i'm gonna probably kick myself for the rest of my life for a wasting their time the way i did and b never putting their hard work to good use and fuck i've got to find those lines i'm gonna do that now I think the thing that made me want to make my mind series the most was not so much the individual mind series, but the interaction and the... Oh, nice work, Simba. My cat knocked my keyboard over. Where was I? There were, it was the source engine. There are technical glitches up the ass. When it... You done, kitty cat? Hey, what do you want? You're interrupting me. Being very rude. Oh, don't, no. Oh, you're coming up here, aren't you? Uh, what do you want? Go away. Now you're blocking my screen. What do you want? Go away.